The Outback Australia is no joke, and it still baffles people today on how the First Nation Indigenous Australians even survived out there for so many years. So take this story as a very serious warning to any tourists that are planning to visit the Outback Australia, as you might think twice about it before listening to this one. And a quick shout out to my stepmom Trace, thank you for suggesting this story, as this is the most anxiety-inducing story I think I've ever told. So without further ado, let's get stuck into the story. June. 2015 at the International New South Wales Airport, two American tourist rocks up that had a trip of a lifetime planned to visit the coast of Australia and surf every wave in between. Now these two people go by the name of Wade Kelly and Lisa Sachs, both in their mid 20s where Lisa hadn't had a job at this period of time and didn't know what she wanted to do in her life. And Wade was on his way to basic training to join the army in the USA. So it was perfect timing to have a giant holiday before they crack down and get serious about life together. And that's what exactly Wade had planned. As when he got to the airport, they were sitting on the plane and yes, he proposed and popped the question. But there was one big issue that was going to ruin the entire vacation. Lisa said no. She wasn't ready at this period of time in her life and she didn't even know what she wanted to do for a career. Now Wade being a top bloke, he accepted that and he still loved her dearly and wanted to continue with the vacation. But as the days went on, it was very difficult for Wade to enjoy himself. He was often down, feeling sad, not wanting to be there. So Lisa thought she might spice the trip up a bit and suggested they go and visit Uluru and go and see for themselves the giant Ayers Rock and all the cave paintings and rock carvings. Now after about two hours of talking about this in their car, well, she convinced him to turn around, head west, out to Uluru. Now this is all good for a spontaneous trip if you're well prepared, but you gotta remember one thing. They had a rental station wagon, just a four cylinder, no mud tires on it, no fuel jerrys, no spare water, no satellite phone, absolutely nothing. This decision was made on a whim. So the next morning, they headed towards Uluru, going west now, but before they left, they wanted to have one last dip in the beach. Now, whilst they were swimming around in the beach outside the flags, as you know, Australian waters are super dangerous, infested with jellyfish in the summertime and infested with sharks at the nighttime. Now, they were swimming in the broad daylight when Wade got stung by a jellyfish on the thigh. Now, it was just a hair jelly, but if this goes untreated, it will get infected and it will bring on fevers and possibly even a blood infection. Now, after Wade was stung, he asked Lisa if she could urinate on it to uh, relieve the pain, to which she declined. So they just jumped in the car and they decided to head west as planned. Now, this does come into the story later as Wade left this leg untreated and then decided to head out west where there are no hospitals and it can be anywhere between six to eight hours between small towns, which also have very limited shops. You pretty much can only pick up tobacco, booze and fuel on your way through these small towns. So as they're exiting New South Wales and they're starting to get into the inner west part of New South Wales, the reception starts dropping in and out. Now this is very common when you head west from Australia. You're gonna start getting black spots in the reception areas and you can go anywhere between 200 to 2000 kilometers without any reception. Now there is signage along roads to let you know this and it's very important that if you're going out west that you carry a satellite phone for any emergencies because this story is going to prove that anything can go wrong. So it's day one and they've started to lose reception. Now the problem with this whole trip is that he decided to only use his iPhone for his GPS. He didn't have an actual installed GPS with an aerial on the outside of his vehicle. So this thing started rerouting from the very get-go. Now all he could see was red dirt and bushland. So he turned left onto a station road. Now what station roads are is it 
separates from the bitumen road and it's a service road to run along stations that can honestly go for days. These station owners to get from one side of their property to the other have to do it via helicopter as it's just not practical to drive as it could take three to four days to get from one side of your fence to the other. Now with this constant rerouting and it just kept sending him in circles, inevitably he ran out of fuel. So now they're parked up and they're stuck but they do have a 10 litre fuel jerry that could get them out of some trouble. Now the only reason why Wade bought this fuel jerry is because on the way out west, a shop teller at the service station actually suggested it to them you should probably take a jerry. Now this is where things get seriously bad as Wade suggested that they walk up a ridge line and head up to the top of a hill so they could see other roads. But he decided to do this at 5 p.m. in the afternoon. So by the time they actually got up to the hill it had already become dark and he couldn't see a thing. Now if you're in the desert and you've got cloud cover you can't see anything as the starlights and the moon is really what gives you your ambient light. Now with this, they started walking in circles on the ground and slowly becoming dehydrated. But they were veering miles away from their vehicle. Now with this, it did get late, so they decided to just have a little sleep on the ground, wait till the morning, reassess and see if they could see their vehicle. But when they woke up, it wasn't so great, as Lisa had been stung by a black desert scorpion. Now this does have a localized venom, but once again, untreated, you're going to become very sick very quickly. And that's exactly what happened with both of them. So you had Wade with this sore leg from a jellyfish sting, and now you have Lisa who's got a scorpion sting, and they're both becoming very crook. Constant vomiting, diarrhea, so they were rapidly dehydrated. Now it got even worse because when the sunlight came out, they couldn't see their car at all. They had actually walked 30 kilometers in the opposite direction. Now, when the heat comes into the desert and you look into the distance, you'll see waves and that distorts your vision. So a car that might be a kilometer away that you could see in the city, well, in the desert, those heat waves make it look like the car is not even there. Okay, so after enduring a long, miserable, cold night in the desert, it was the next morning, but this time, it was panic stations as they were both very unwell and super dehydrated. So Wade decided he had to act now. Now what he did next was pretty genius. He grabbed these big large white boulders and he made an SOS symbol in the red sand that could be seen from the sky. Then what he did was he gave her the last of the water, made her drink that to get better, took the empty bottle and a large stick to drag a line in the sand behind him. Now this was for in case he found the vehicle, he could just follow that line in the sand, his way back to Lisa and get them out of there. But after walking all day through the desert, Wade had no luck and had no choice but to lay down and go to sleep for the night and try again in the morning as walking around in the dark in the desert was rendered useless. So now the mornings come and it's day three. No food, no water, and very little sleep. Now we've got Wade knocking on death's door. By the grace of gods, he actually spotted the vehicle. So he's quickly made his way to the vehicle. With this, he's got an adrenaline rush. He's super excited and he makes his way to the vehicle only to realize that he left the headlights on. Yes, like could this get any worse? Now after turning the key ignition and hearing absolutely nothing and the starter motor not even turning over, he realized he was in a world of hurt, as they're still on the edge of this station in the middle of nowhere with no one knowing where they are and no way to contact anyone. So Wade's staggering around the car and he's extremely dehydrated. Now the only fluid he could find was the window wiper reservoir. So he's pulled that out of the bonnet of the car and he started downing it desperation for liquid to hit those dry lips. But that was his grave mistake, as he basically drank Windex. So after downing a bottle of Windex, he decides to head back and try and find Lisa and follow his line in the sand, to where he only made it one kilometer from the car and collapsed. Now what actually had happened to Wade was his kidneys failed, and this would have been a very excruciating way to go out, 
as it would have taken several hours for his organs to shut down. Now, whilst this is all happening on day four of being stranded out in the desert, we've got Wade who just carved it. Lisa is still back at the spot where he left her. But this time, she's had a second wind. And as soon as she saw that line in the sand, she had an adrenaline rush, and it was like something came over her and gave her a second chance. But in reality, what had happened was sleeping and staying still for so long had broken down the protein-based venom in the scorpion sting. Now, this is a common practice used by the First Nations Australians, and they can even do this with snake bites. Yes, you heard correctly. First Nations Australians can get bitten by a brown snake in the desert and literally sleep it off like a honey bat. So now Lisa's made her way to the car, it, by an absolute miracle, mind you. And she did the right thing. She stayed in the car and used it as shelter. And then when the sun would move, she would move onto the other side of the car and use that as shelter from the sun. Now with this, she's fallen asleep in the middle of the day, probably also knocking on death's door when the station owner noticed a SOS sign in the middle of her property when she was mustering her cattle. With this, she's parked up the helicopter, jumped on the four-wheeler, made her way out to there, and well, Lisa, by some miracle, was still alive. Now this story is absolutely incredible that Lisa even made it out of here alive. She got medical attention and made a full recovery where she flew back to Minnesota and became a full-time nurse. Unfortunately for Wade, he did pass away and he was flown back to America where he could have a proper burial. But this is a true story and should be a severe warning to any tourist that want to visit the Outback Australia. This turned south within six hours of one mistake. As soon as that aircon turns off and you realize how little water you have and how hot the desert conditions are, that's where panic sets in but never ever leave the vehicle. That is your best chance of survival. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's story. Gulaga.